Play your role as a proud affiliate of Epoch's 3D Magnetic Dungeon Tiles Kickstarter. Epoch is making absolutely incredible magnetic tiles that you can snap together and make a battle map in mere seconds. They've been incredibly kind to my channel, and their product looks absolutely amazing. The Kickstarter ends on February 25th, so if you would like to help out our friends, please go check out the link in the description to support both us and them. Enjoy the video. Okay, I'm gonna open this up with being totally honest and transparent. This character idea does not work if your DM's not on board. If you can't get your DM on board, don't do it, don't try it, ignore it. That being said, it is one of my favorite character archetypes and one I really hope to see someday in one of my games or play. So, let's talk about that. So what character archetype were we talking about today? Well, it's a character who's stronger than everybody else, but not technically. Mechanically, they're about on the same level, but lore-wise, story-wise, behind the scenes, they have the ability or potential to be a lot stronger. I'm calling this character archetype the demigod because I really don't have a name for it. I know that there's probably a name out there somewhere, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Maybe it's fallen god, maybe it's god amongst men, I don't know, but I'm gonna go with the demigod. And what this character idea is, is a character that is theoretically far more powerful than the rest of the party. But for a lot of different reasons, they don't act that way, they don't present that way, or something in between. The best way that I can explain this is, well, a character who's maybe a previous god or a dragon disguised as a human who is following an adventuring party. A lot of players I've seen want to play this type of archetype and the DM immediately goes, no, absolutely not, I'm not letting you be stronger than everybody else. Or even worse, it's the DM's girlfriend. He says, yeah, absolutely, and lets them be way more powerful. However, I do think there's a way to do this right and I think it's really fun, but you really have to get the DM on board and play it correctly. Now, I was planning to, at one point, play a character like this in a campaign that did not end up happening. The idea was, is we had a Storm Soul Sorcerer, and so I was going to play somebody who was a blood hunter who had the ability to summon lightning, etc. But the idea was that he used to be a demigod and he had at one point been traveling with the sorcerer and the sorcerer died and so rather than see her die he put his power into her he allowed his power to begin transferring to her and that's why she was a storm soul sorcerer but she did not realize that she was siphoning power from him and the idea was that eventually as time went on and she kept leveling up he was a level 20, but the more that she used power, the more he lost his. And the more that he used his power, the more he expended it and transferred it to her. And so he had to be careful. And so, mechanically, they would be on the same level because he was conserving his power. But as time went on and as he grew more and more levels, it was because he was being forced to expend more and more of himself. And eventually, he would hit a level cap, around 11 or 12, and he would no longer be able to use his powers. He would have officially totally drained himself and the rest of the power would go to her until she hit level 20 and achieved the demigod status he once had. Sarabata. One for all. Ultimately, I think it would have been really fun. I'm sad we didn't get to play it out. Maybe someday we still will, but I think that that type of character can be a lot of fun. Somebody who's more than they seem, more powerful than the party, but for one reason or another, they just can't act that way. One thing I would totally avoid is having a character who really is that powerful, but just doesn't, because ultimately it can really trivialize things. For example, say you want to play a dragon who is disguised, and you want it to be a big reveal at some point, a massive encounter where you reveal that you were a dragon the whole time. That could be cool, but think about it this way. If you do that, you trivialize every single tense and important encounter the party has been in up until that point. They know that you could have just taken care of it because you were a dragon. I mean, come on, you could have just wiped the encounter. And so it's not that exciting. It really takes away from any drama that the story would have had up until that point. And that's where things get problematic, you see? That's why I think there needs to be a legitimate reason of why you can't use your power. So when you do use your power, well, there's a dramatic reason. There's drama behind it, there's consequences. Consequences are a huge part of D&D because consequences create tension. They create stakes. Without consequences, it is not as important or impactful. We really do have to keep in mind that they are super powerful, but there has to be a reason of why they don't do that. And you can go a lot of different ways. Maybe they were a dragon, but they're trapped in a mortal form and they're trying to get back out. Or maybe they were a god that has been struck down Thor style, and now they have to be able to regain their power. Or they have that power, but it's locked within them because, well, like I said, something's slowly sapping it away from them, or they're slowly dying, or the more that they use it, it will kill them. That's a fun idea. They used to be god they still have that power but their mortal form literally can't handle it so the more they use the power the more they're killing themselves so they have to gatekeep it but this does lead to that eventual wanted fantasy right the fantasy of letting it all out of letting the party see 
who you are. Of letting the party see how strong you've been. Of being able to have that awesome, epic, amazing moment of just unleashing everything Jean Grey style. Right? I mean, that's a lot of fun. It's an amazing fantasy that you really do want to be able to put in your game, but how do you do it right? Because ultimately I see this archetype leading down that road. It either leads down to your character fully giving up their power or unleashing it like this. And how do you do that without trivializing everything that happened previously? How do you do that without removing the consequences and tension? And I wonder, what was the point? Well, picture this. Say you are a character who is, like we've mentioned before, a god who's been trapped in a mortal form and their full power will disintegrate them. It will remove them from the planes. And so they have to be careful, but it gets to a point where there's an adventure or an encounter that is just too much and your party is going to die. And you know this. You know that this is the last chance that you have and nothing else is going to happen. And so you look across at all your party members dying from this encounter and your character makes a choice. Yes, they would love to be a god again someday. They would love to be able to redeem themselves and maintain their immortal form but you realize that you care too much about these people to let them die. And you're not powerless, but your power will cost you. And so you look at the DM and you say, I would like to unleash what I have, and I would like to end this encounter. Your DM might let you. They might let you explode with this lightning and thunder and destroy the monsters and maintain your godly form for just a moment, but what happens afterwards? Your body's done. You might have died. It might be totally paralyzed. Who knows? Who knows what you just did to yourself? But the reason the consequences and the stakes have not been removed is because you have now suffered a huge consequence from this. They know that you were not able to do this before because now you have to live with what happened. It wasn't an option. It was the last resort. And that's how you make these types of characters actually worth it and not stealing the spotlight from everybody else. It is really tempting to play these sorts of things, but you have to remember that at a D&D &D table, everybody must be the main character. Everybody must be important because that's why we play D&D. &D. It's not a story where you can have somebody else be the main character and everybody else just be supportive characters. Does that type of game work? Sure, but most people aren't looking for that. So you have to maintain those consequences, the tenses, the stakes. And if you do that and you can create that incredible atmosphere of any time that you actually unleash your power, there's a giant consequence and they know you can't just do that again, that's where it's important. And I would really recommend if you do get to that point of unleashing everything, retire the character afterwards. Don't leave it up in the air of if that's going to happen again because that will begin to remove the tension. And if you could do that sort of thing, I think it creates a fantastic story and narrative that your party will like. So try it out. You go out into the world, make it your own, you beautiful bastards. Don't forget to have a great day and never forget to play a role. A huge shout out to all those divine bastards over on our Patreon that helped make this video happen. I'd also like to take an additional very personal thank you to BKBW, Diet Blue, Duplicolor, Malkadil, I hope I pronounced that right, Sassy Cat Productions, Sorit, Supreme Court, Tinai, and Void Mystic. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without our patrons, and we are very thankful for your continued support. You guys are the absolute best, and I will never take your support for granted.